Hello and welcome to the Fontainebleau Photogrammetry Assets for Games demo by Unity. Pretty new stuff, this is for Unity 2018, the project that is, the demo you can play on any computer if you can run it. We have cinematic first person and third person mode, let's check out third person mode first. We've got a cool night here and uh, it's basically the standard third person character in a beautiful environment which is based on a forest near Paris, because Unity has a an office in Paris. They went out and took some photos of environments to build this level. And they have a bunch of tips for people how to uh, do this too. Basically, they, basically it's an advanced tutorial and tool set for creating awesome looking environments based on real environments using photography. And they have tips for that. Yeah, I don't really don't see where we can go. Quite, quite the invisible wall. Hell. Uh, what we're gonna do is change to cinematic mode real quick. We can switch between different times of day. Let's check out night. It's pretty, pretty beautiful. We can turn on the lights, turn them off. Yeah. Okay. Dragon. We can switch to. Noon or morning, I guess. Very beautiful stuff. Nice. Alright, we're gonna stick to this and uh, let's press escape to go back to the third person... No, first person mode. Let's check out the first person mode because this is a developer commentator mode. This is really good, I think, and I think most of us haven't seen this. Oh man, look at this detail. Nice. Because, uh, I mean, there's three options, probably most check out the third person mode and even more people only checked out the video. So let's check out these hints. Developer commentary, non-voiced, I'm gonna voice them. Uh, equipment, the following, is a recommend uh, the following is a recommended list of equipment to capture good data for high quality photo photogrammetry. You can also use this as a checklist each time the team travels to a shooting location. Um. Yeah, drones. Oh yeah, yeah, for text tiling textures, the drone is smart. GoPro they recommend. Uh-huh, a MacBook <laughs> Pro. Filters, interesting stuff. I'm sure they have a text list somewhere. All right, we're gonna keep going. There's a lot of them. Can we go this way? No. All right, what is this? Uh, we see some rock that they paid extra attention to. Oh no, look at this. I think I see this darkening s screen effect that is extremely annoying in very many Unreal Engine games. Anyways, Le Dragon. All right. Where? Traveling to various locations to photograph objects takes time as well as the deployment of the various capture devices. It is necessary to carefully plan the shooting trip to minimize the amount of travel and prevent Wasted time. Good areas are where the maximum number of assets can be captured at the same location. If you are capturing environmental geography, Google Earth can be a great help in finding the right location. Alright. Ah, uh, look at this. So I think this is in-game and this is the photo. Let's look at this side by side. We can see there's a lot more detail on the left. And the right lo looks a bit more artistic. No, wait, I'm wrong. Both is the original. It's just different resolutions. Huh. Man, this detail in the... In this piece of wood, I guess, is really beautiful. Oh, rock? Really beautiful. Anyways, layered shader. A layered shader defines a visual... Uh, with a combination of individual materials. The main material that is shown in the picture is mixed with other materials of stone, ground element, and moss. The other materials are tallable. This means they can wrap around objects and you can reuse them on different objects. Using a combination of materials enables you to have a similar visual quality as a high resolution texture, as in a similar textile density on screen, but with low resolution textures, which saves memory. Why is the shadow so extreme? They didn't think of that, did they? All right, let's keep going. Is there, is there anything? There's something down here. Oh no, don't get stuck. And there's uh, something down here. Beautiful environment, really beautiful. 
Okay, asset selection, I'm guessing this is the right way to go. Remember that photog photogrammetry is best suited to objects that are time-consuming to produce in 3D sculpting software. Don't use photogrammetry for simple shapes like a cube. Don't try to capture everything in the location. Think in terms of usable pieces. Select a, subtle, uh, select a subset that allows you to reconstruct the environment. Focus on quality instead of quantity and of captures. The example below shows identification of pieces of the environment that will provide a toolkit of elements that will allow you to build a game level with several instance assets uh, focused on a, a forest in this case. It's getting late. Pine ground, one, uh, two, moss ground on the right, three, roots on the bottom right, four, silver birch, left top, five, branches, bottom left, six, pine cone, bottom left, seven, pine tree, center, eight, bushes, bottom, nine, little tree, right, 10, sand ground, bottom right. 11, center. Vegetation. What a general term. All right, let's go to the next developer commentary, so to speak. This here is a moss covered, grass covered ground. Let's take a look. Do we see this texture? <clears throat> Can we recognize this? A lot of dry leaves there, so I'm kind of doubtful we will actually see this. This is too dry by comparison. This is stony. Um, did they actually use that? Because if not, that would be a horrible example, really. Maybe it's all below this stuff. Maybe back there. This. Oh, I think this texture might be it. Yeah. It looks kind of uh, gra um, leafy. Over here, no can't really find a good example of where they actually use that texture that they show in the picture. Huh. Well, let's just check what kind of detailed textures. Okay, we're gonna keep going back on the original path. Oh, here it is. Uh, I think... Yeah, yeah. Over here. This seems to be the texture they showed earlier. Let's go back. Come on. Uh, next one. Here we go. Okay, how to capture a surface? First, find a location without shadows or use an occu uh, occ occluder to protect it from significant direct lighting. Remove the undesired elements. Pay attention to significant elements or patterns, especially if the goal is to create a tileable material. Avoid walking in the area that will be captured so that you do not make footprints in it or break natural elements. At the location, use markers for example, tent pegs for soft surfaces, chalk for hard surfaces, to define the area to capture marked by red arrows on the photo below. See? Little red indicators. <clears throat> um, to define... So, again, use markers to define the area to capture... Full stop. For a 2K by 2K texture and a texel ratio of 1K texel per meter in a game use an area of 2 by 2 meters. It is important to keep the same ratio between the real world and the virtual asset. Place the color checker close to the area to capture. Color checker. Huh. Fascinating. All right, we're gonna keep going. This is real professional stuff, isn't it? There's some area. This is really a nice explore exploratory environment. Oh man, look at this gorgeous moss. So freaking beautiful. Alright, here we go. How to capture a small object, for example this pine cone. Small objects are often used to populate a scene by duplicating many of the same small objects around in different areas. They can be rotated, scaled, and mirrored to create variety. For such objects, it is required to cover all parts from all directions to reconstruct full assets. What they have there is a white background, I suppose. Mm. And the color palette. What is that thing? Kind of object to hold a thing in place. Alright. 
I, I'm really not sure how they did that. Maybe the other hints will reveal. I'm, I'm really there. There's some more of that texture that we saw earlier. It's really strange that they showed off that area and then used it the least. All right. Uh, let's go to this. Am I missing anything? I think there's nothing. All right, here we go. How to capture foliage. 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 Oh man, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Foliage is difficult to capture mainly because it is sensitive to wind and movement during the capture. Still, it is recommended to, to capture it on site because cutting and bringing them to another location may change their look in a short amount of time, like a leaf would dry out. There are various techniques with additional custom equipment and under different lighting conditions that can be used, but then it becomes difficult to travel fi uh, efficiently. All right. Hey, did we check this one out? Wow, I could actually walk here. Detailed textures. I guess let's do this. All right, we get... Um, right, this is not another tree. This is actually the same tree, right? I can't really tell. There's a fine line between them. So I guess it is what I just said. I really need a zoom feature for this demo. Huh. What is up with this seam? This looks a bit weird. Nah, it's fine. Alright. Detailed textures are a secondary layer of textures used in combination with the main texture to add detail at different scale. For example, a bark texture which covers a large area of a model might be enhanced by adding a higher resolution detail texture at much smaller scale which shows small cracks and imperfections in the bark. Yes, that is true. N missing detail textures is a sad thing in games. But it happens. What do we have here? Layered shader. This looks trippy. You can use photo grammetry solely for material creation and map it onto the virtual objects. Terrain doesn't use the main layer influence option of the layered shader. Instead it relies on four tileable materials. Why four? To set the texture up using the HD render pipeline layered shader, you need to create a layered shader with four layers and apply it to the ground objects. You can then paint the ground objects using the vertex color. This is definitely targeted at somebody who knows the tools that they are talking about, which I do not. Never even seen them. Didn't even read the whole blog post. I think we're done with the uh, developer commentary, let's call it. As I have been calling it all the time. I really want to jump, come on. Ah. Well, it's not a game. It's a freaking tech demo. It's a beautiful one. So let's see, we did this, we did everything. There's nothing else to explore. Man, look at these awesome roots. This is freaking amazing. Beautiful. Looks a bit off, but pretty awesome. Imagine they would remake Gothic in this. Okay. Gorgeous. Why am I lagging around? What's going on? All right, we're done here, I think. What's this? Layer Chater? We did read this already. And that is it. What we can do is switch in uh, cinematic mode, we can switch the time of day. Escape, and we're... Let's check out the third person mode. We can walk around a little. Okay. Keep, keep pressing shift to run. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go this way and this way. Very beautiful. I wonder if they recorded the audio, but... Nah, they definitely did not. Come on. They got some assets. They don't need that. Very nice. Let's check out the... Wait a minute. The lamps are off. That's too bad. Oh well. I guess those models are only for the uh, cinematic mode. So now let's switch to... A different time. Daytime this time instead of... Instead of morning slash evening or night. And go back to first person mode. Yeah, it's a bit brighter. Hmm. Okay, there was some adaption maybe necessary to this. Anyways, beautiful scene. We can also 
download the project and uh, use it. I don't know what the terms are, really. I haven't checked that out. But maybe it's possible to use these assets. That would be pretty epic. Anyways, thanks for checking this out. And make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next Unity Engine video of mine. And until then, ciao!